not brought to you by Helds. Hey, everybody. Is Helds a new sponsor? No. <laughs> you said not, <laughs> not brought not. to you. Hey, welcome to Full Spectrum Cycling. This is show number 255. You can't drive that. I'm eating uh, Helds. Tony, Tony's here. He's Mild. He's, he's right. He wasn't there before last week, but he's there now again. And we got the JK wearing uh, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee. Was that shirt white at one point? Milwaukee by bike? Still is. Ish. Mm. Ish. Ish. I don't separate. I think you're seeing yeah, the reflection of his manly chest behind it. Probably. I know Maybe my nips kind of, kind of fly out of here. That's why I have my the, daughter, over, though, the oversmock. My, my daughter and her boyfriend have a once a month Saturday date to go to Hell's. Nice. Good I call. I can think of very, like, Way worse ideas to do on a Saturday afternoon. So she's she's the uh, she, last. She did the Held Run for us, guys. Right on. But they were out of. What are we currently noshing on? Because the, this is the mild beef cut beef jerky, and then I'm going to switch up because I like it to a <laughs> hot Lanjaga. Remember when we had the Lanjaga hanging in the shop for like and six I months? Ate it and had and no it just, problem. It turned into basically a salt lick. It was the best. It was very good. They dripped a little bit of oil on the on the wheel of that bike. And some of the merchandise. <laughs> it was just it was totally worth it. it. Just hung from those handlebars. It was awesome. Don't mind us. We're just chewing. Yeah, we yep. were just over at um, Amorphic <laughs> just before the show mm-hmm. because well, a JK had to bring a bike over, but b because I needed to know what the name of the place is that's in the former shoppy space you that we had. Shoppy. Uh, Over there. That's what you had on. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I Which thought you is, were thinking the vape show. And I, now I forgot it again. <laughs> Forward Outdoor? Is that what it is? Forward Outdoor, yes. As yes. soon as I saw the picture of him on, on MKBK, I'm looking at that room and I'm like, um, where are you located? And they're like, in the Amorphic building behind Amorphic. I'm like, our space. <laughs> right. And they rent. I mean, I get renting canoe paddle thingies like kayaks because you can do that right here. But they also rent full suspension mountain bikes. Which you can't really use here. So you they can do the river trails and just be a poser. You can't do the river trails because it's illegal. So if you're running a business, you really can't go down there. That's a good point. So I assume that they run them out to the kettles and do like a full on, you know, day thing of doing that. Anyway, forward. I'm going to check into it a little bit more because it's right over there. Hey, look at that. Guess what happens when you start late? Dave calls in. You get you get somebody calling in immediately. <laughs> Welcome to the radio program caller. Who do we have on the line? It's Sealy Dave. Right on, Sealy Dave. Yeah, we we were a few few minutes behind, so you're you're like our our first uh, a talkie talk person. How's it going? Oh, okay. I, I'm doing I'm doing okay. Yeah, um, it's lightning and thundering and Ooh. possible tornadoes up here, but mm-hmm. yeah. we got that in a couple hours down here. It's it's on its way. It's not here yet. Yeah. It, if it does the Milwaukee split like all of last summer, right? Yeah. You know, it's like north and south. Yes. <laughs> Milwaukee. See the wave. Mm, no. It breaks both ways, Lance. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was watching. I was watching the Duluth news, and they spun it a completely different way. They were showing who has the best chance of being hit by a tornado. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> well, some people, some people like tornadoes as long as they're like at least yeah, a couple hundred feet away. Chasers, they live in earth ships. Chasers, I, yeah. Nope. I don't need tornadoes. No, thank you. Well, you're in kind of a you're in kind of a could fall on my house. you're in kind of a holler up there though, aren't you? I mean, it would kind of bounce over the Esker next year or something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they, I think they run along the ground. I, I don't know that just because there's a big hill behind us that it would miss us. But I think I, I think it would. Any, yeah, I, I'd go with it would. That would be my well, guess. <laughs> all right, we'll knock on wood for that. Right on. Um, yeah, so uh, I just calling in. Um, just quick FYI, all the Canva trails are open up here now, so if people are starting to mountain bike. Like Telemark, uh, the new Trek trails powered by OTM that the Berkey and Rock Solid built up at uh, Telemark Village are not open yet because those were, you know, kind of new and encapsulated with clay. So it's been rainy, so they're not quite open yet. But what what's are, what's uh are open. what's OTM? One Track Mind Foundation. It's uh, uh, oh, gotcha. like a Tanhassen based uh, foundation that donates 
significant amount of money for mountain bike trails. Hmm. Um, I think they gave half a million to the Berkey for this, as, about as much as Trek. They're building a, another bike park uh, just south of us in um, Cumberland at Timberland Hills. And if you look at their website, One Track Mind Foundation, um, they've got projects all over the place. Cool. Uh, but, what? Yeah. Good. But they're not open yet because uh, of the still wet um, up here. But uh, but the regular trails are. And, of course, bike packing is always available. So Awesome. Which Cowboy and I just got back from. Noise. So this How's is the, Cowboy like the bike? Yeah, is this the first trip on the Omnium? So we've been, you know, because I had, you know, my hernia and surgery and blah, blah, blah. It's been like I, I got the bike. I rode it three times, and then I got a hernia and it sat for two and a half months or whatever. But um, once I got the okay from the doc post surgery, about four weeks to start riding, um, I cowboy and I had been, we probably have a month, well, three weeks of riding. Um, you know, I kind of eased into it. So starting, you know, with shorter trips and stuff, but um, just day trips. So he's fairly experienced in the, and he likes the, Omnium way better than the Yuba than sitting nice. in the back. I don't know if it's probably a combination of it being in the front and that it's so much bigger. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've, uh, we've seen a few pictures I, recently, I switched, so awesome. Yeah, I switched back to that um, that wicker front basket that I originally had on it last time I saw you, Greg. I had that like that plastic thing. Um, from Walmart to right, yep. underbed storage. I think they're they're both like underbed storage bins. But um, <laughs> nice. that one was bigger, and he could lie down in it better. But I realized he likes this this sort of higher side, the narrower profile of that um, wicker one. He's snug, snuggle in it more. You know, it nice. grips his sides. And I noticed when he hops up into the basket, he always backs his butt up back to the back wall. <laughs> well, so I, he's like, he like, he like sort of hops in and then he gets himself, you know, pushed into the back. So he's like, feels secure. Um, which you couldn't really do with that lighter, bigger plastic. One. Yeah. Maybe uh, kind of slip, slickery well. in there. <laughs> I'm curious because, uh, uh, Brandon's already basically out of, uh, electric versions. And you, we got the electric one down here, so I I ordered yeah. I ordered the last of his small ones, and when I ordered that, uh, I also ordered their collapsible cargo box, even though it's spendy. Oh, and you I, did. I'm yeah, just curious how it would work for something like I might lend it to you for you know whatever, see how it works, just just because yeah, I'd, I'd like, like to, to know. I'd like to see it. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it. Um, you know what? In my mind. The ideal, um, I don't want to get too far in the weeds about dog packing baskets, but in my mind, the ideal way to do this would be to drill like four holes in the top of the, um, in the top of the, uh, cargo deck pipes in the front and in the back and put like carbon or aluminum rods, vertical rods in those holes, mm. um, you know, and then and then just wrap some like, you know, whatever around it. Macrame, you know, um, do your old seventies macrame it could, styling. <laughs> yeah, like an inner tubes. You could go old school like that, or you could use inner tubes or or whatever. You know, um, you know, you could just have a a little inexpensive lightweight frame that you just pop onto the top. It sinks through some holes, and maybe you just. I don't even think it needs to screw in or anything. You could just use cotter pins or clevis pins or something like that, you know, to hold it in place. But, yeah. And it's just like a, a, a frame that you would wrap some, you know, stuff around. It could be whatever cloth or, um, that to me seems ideal. The cargo box. I think that you've got for car, Cowboy, I don't think he's going to like it because, like, it looks too wide. Yeah, I was, I was curious. I mean, the you know? the thing for me is not being a dog person and just 
because it collapses, you yeah. know, it folds down. It's like when you're no, not using it. it, it yeah, I'm just curious because yeah. we're a dealer and I want to make sure that we're already? representing already, the stuff. Here, do you have it? Uh, no, that's here coming soon. It? I ordered a bunch of stuff and uh, that's okay. on its way. Or I got to either go down and get it, meet, or he's coming up here or something. Because, you know, it's expensive uh, well, to ship I'm the stuff. Be down, um, Frankie's, Frankie's gone on a like a four day vacation. Um, the end of the month. Um, and I have a meeting about right across Wisconsin with Will and Sprocket and Bike Fed um, on the 30th. So I'm going to be down that those four days, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so if you get that stuff in, maybe we can take a look at it. That, that, is that over, a mom, mom, not this weekend, next weekend? When is it? N- correct. Not this weekend, the following weekend. Right on. I'll be around for like four or five days. Do you still follow? And I'll uh, bring my cargo. I'll bring my cargo bike down. Cool. Do you still follow uh, bicycle news out in the uh, the wider world? A bicycle retail news. Any industry? kind of any just any kind of bicycle Green? like the Kona saga because you know Kent and whatever and oh, Kona yeah. and yep. running and yep. now now Kona oh. is got they got the co-founders bought it back from yep. Kent. The OGs. Jake, yeah, doesn't Jake that the snake is back? I believe both. Both, I know JK has a Kona, I believe. Yep, sold mine. Oh, Tony sold his Kona, unbeknownst to me. Very sad. Um, uh, but I think it was, it's, a, it's a great brand. I'm glad somebody's getting it back that understands what made Kona Kona. Yeah. You know, it's like right. Surly's gotten kind of unsurly-like in some ways, and, you know, it's like, eh. It's just good to keep, Sur- Surly's keep, the, o- keep the OG. Legit. It's pretty legit. It, it's hard to say that. Thoroughly okay. I mean, to the maybe some of the old school, you know, OG thoroughly adopters. Um, thoroughly still, thoroughly and salsa are, are still pretty rad. You know, urban adventure, etc. You know that vibe. True enough. You know, um, it's not quite as you know PBR ish as it used to be, but and but they're both pretty pretty rad companies still. I think and Kona used to be as well always made i i don't know that kona ever really made bad any bad bikes no. maybe they had a couple in there but and they were always pushing that um utility adventure angle as well so yeah so that's cool that that they're back yeah for sure i found uh 20 bucks on the um, street I, the other day i was just getting out of my vehicle and 20 dollars was blowing by poop dollar just 20 dollars Wow. And, then, and then I thought, hmm, better than it. In 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 some instances in the past, more than one dollar has been blowing by. So there was another two dollars that blew past it too. <laughs> nice. So I sent big sexy twenty dollars. I figured that was a good sign. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's like I hey, kept I kept pretty, the two as the as the tip. So, you know, I I'm not like friends with them anymore, but like I know the PR guy for Schwinn. Oh really? Right on. I just because yeah, I used to work with him at the bike ride, you know. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to send you Big I Sexy's could. heartfelt letter that he wrote to Schwinn, and it isn't that he was like, yeah. Why they, don't you Why don't you send me that and I'll I'll email it to I'll email it to Ryan. Well, get it to the right people say, because it would. Hey. You know, he never even got a response from them, and it's like I don't, he doesn't right. really care if he so gets maybe, stuff, but he wants to at least yeah, be heard, right. you know. He's got to have some sort right. of Guinness no, Book record of riding a shitty Schwinn track oh, three wheeler trike, trike somewhere, yeah. you know, all around the United States. Right. Yeah. No, it. It. I. I mean, they may still be like, eh, we don't. We're a family brand now. We were mostly big box stores. We don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't care, care about, about people who are sponsored by Jägermeister so much. <laughs> well, I mean, they yum, went yum, through a few brief a brief forays where they were, you know, where they were, um, uh, you know, doing some fancier stuff with the, the Paramount anniversary and stuff like that. But I, I don't really know where they're at. Um, I've been out of touch and haven't really been following Schwinn. So I can't really say, but I did, after I heard that last big sexy thing, um, I, I remembered I worked with the guy and I looked and he's still the head of their, 
marketing department. Right. So on. I I still have I still have his email. So so you're the you're yeah. you're a Gmail now, not a Yahoo, right? Or you're, yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm sending it right he, now. So. He, I just sent it. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. for some cool. reason, your old Yahoo address kept coming up, and I kept not getting stuff through to you. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that Yahoo. Does anybody still use Yahoo Mail? I don't know. I still have an yeah. AOL email. That's so. my junk email account. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, I, have a, I still have a Hotmail account. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, so a Hotmail, mail. Hotmail, Yahoo, and Gmail, all with the same. Frozen Han. Frozen Han. Yeah, I, I kept, yeah. like, when a new... When a new uh, Service would open up like iTools or Gmail or something. I'd be like right away. Yeah, I, I want mine. I want G A Smith, which is going to be gone almost immediately. So I'm like, bam. <laughs> so so I've 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 kept a lot of those that I just glommed onto immediately, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. All right, so well, I'll, uh, I'll send that. I'll take a look at that and I'll send it to uh, to Ryan at uh, at Schwinn and see what he says. But no promises. No, no worries. So, uh, just real quick, I didn't. I kind of bounced around about the whole dog packing thing. So, um, cowboy liked the bike. Nice. It, it went well. He has camped with me before, but it's been car camping, not. And the last time we did it, it was twenty-seven below zero, Ooh, and he was not happy. <laughs> um, so, so I never quite know what he's going to think. Um, but he seemed to have quite a bit of fun on the trip the whole biking part was great it was a short ride you know 20 miles each way or whatever um just as a test and um but uh he, the bugs are out now oh. um you know so when we got to camp all of a sudden he's in a cloud of gnats and mosquitoes mm-hmm. and he's just like dude and did, did, he just spent all his time in the tent like he was not into it <laughs> and i tried the the dog friendly bug spray stuff but i don't think they were biting him so much but he just didn't you know he kept inhaling them mm-hmm. and sneezing and um you know so i i he doesn't like the bugs um which is a problem up here this time of the year and then um so i I did a little research into it and I found some people do just use regular human head nets. Those, you know, they're $2 a piece on Amazon or something. Um, And just sort of tuck it in under their collars just to keep the bugs out of their dog's noses and mouth. So I think we'll give, I'm going to give that a try. One more dog packing trip in the, but I've got friends that can't, uh, can't even, they can't stand, even if they've got a head net on, to have that massive cloud. Just It just drives them crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it doesn't bother me that much, but I, I, I know other humans that can't stand it. And, you know, I guess it, Cowboy has no reason to put up with it. So. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> so if, well, I, if I had the choice of not time, having it or having it, have, yeah, I would go for not having it. What? I said, if I had the choice yeah. of having it or oh. not having it, I would definitely go with not having right. it. Well, well, me too, obviously. <laughs> but it cuts out like two entire months of, you know, from now until, you know, August, basically, is it's buggy, you know. So it's, it's three months of, you know, and there's different things. There's black flies, mosquitoes, gnats, different things. But but it's, if you if you can't deal with it, you know, you got to keep moving. Yeah, <laughs> you can't sure. just sit in camp. All right, uh, uh, so I'm gonna try that. Otherwise, I think I'm going to have to go. Like Iowa doesn't really have. You know, I've been talking about like you know, trying to figure out some sort of Decora trip, so um, Decora route. Uh, and um, Iowa doesn't really have isn't big on mosquitoes, right? Well, I think it depends on where you are. If you're in like Yellow River Forest or down by the Mississippi, I think it's a lot different than in some of the other yeah, drier that areas. Kind of, that I mean, that's kind of the direction I'd want to ride in from Decora. Yeah, you, I mean, talk to direction. talk to locals, Chewy, Spinner, you know, those guys, Captain. And when you you know when you're yeah. in Decora, what you're going to get to. You're going to get to the top of the hill for oh, sure right. because there's hills all over that place. Uh, she talked to us. 
Yeah, what do you got going with uh, the top of the hill? You got a beer going over there, Dave? I do. I um, During the recent, um, earlier in the spring, I there's a real cool um, uh, coffee shop, uh, uh, craft brewery place over in Stone Lake called the Whistle Punk. Um, and the guy, Ian, is a mountain biker guy I know who runs it. And he is also a... Uh, what are they called? Not a sommelier, the beer, the beer version of sommelier. <laughs> a beer, a beer drinker. <laughs> oh, a beer snob. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm going directly to triumph the insult, comic dog. I find you find yourself to be a connoisseur of fine beer. I find my, I am a connoisseur of pretentious assholes, and I find you fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it, it starts with an S too. It's a uh, it's a certification um, like a sommelier, right, except right. for beer. Huh. And he is one anyway. Shit, and so he shit has, he has all kinds of cool, not just craft beers, but um, Belgian and Euro beers. So during the spring classics, I would go there to get a Belgian beer to watch the races with, and um, and I mentioned that as my favorite. Belgian beer is Pirat, and uh, and it's I can't get it up here. So he, out of the blue, he texted me and said, "Hey, I got four four packs of Pirat sitting here. If you want them, um, he got them from his distributor. So that's what I'm drinking. I'm drinking a Pirat. Cool. Tony brought ours today. It, 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 this is the Three Sheeps. I like Three Sheeps. Yeah, they do a good job. I think they uh, really do this across is the, the board. The chaos pattern hazy. 6.5 up there. Sheboygan, Wisconsin way, your Gee, surf Boynton. capital of the Midwest, if you happen to be into the <laughs> surfing they, they, I don't know if you're aware of this. They had Gee, more Boynton. bars per capita than, Eddie, than any city in the United States until my city took it over. Oh, boy. Oshkosh, Wisconsin. They also had more whorehouses up there. Oshkosh was, did, too. It was a big stop Sheboygan on the old... Had, oh, Sheboygan was a stop she, on the Sheboygan on the had more bars port. per capita than any other... City in the United States until Oshkosh beat them. That's yeah. got to be; those have to be kind of tricks per of numbers. population. Yeah, per, per well, capita. Right? Sure, per capita. Yeah. I mean, there's a small town. There's a bar every half because, block. I mean, Milwaukee in the Milwaukee in the fifties had you know two taverns on every corner. <laughs> yeah, right? but, for sure. I mean, come on, now. Was, just look at the polls. <laughs> I, I I probably said this on this pod podcast at least once, but Johnny Carson said there's two places to be for St. Patrick's Day: Ireland and Oshkosh, Wisconsin. <laughs> it was Johnny. so it was so bad that they moved spring break to be over St. Patrick's Day weekend because they had so many riots. <laughs> I was on the south side of Chicago this past year. Yeah, right, for the, for was, the dying. I was in the lion's den, man. <laughs> Did you meet Leroy Brown down there? <laughs> no. You better oh, just gosh. beware. Baddest man the whole damn time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I escaped with pretty much all my wits. All right, Dave, anything? All right, so uh, you're not here this weekend. This weekend is a uh, tour of the – is that this Towner. weekend? Mm -hmm. That is this Towner weekend. Sunday. Tour de Towner is Sunday. What a fun ride. Um, so you're going to – the so 26th, so no, that would be... No, I won't be there for that. I'm going to be down there over Sunday. the next weekend, and then I'm pretty sure yeah, I'm coming so. again for, <laughs> uh, is it June 15th, the um, Satire Tour? It's the 40th, yeah. right? Yeah. It's also Father's Day. So uh, just, if I come to Milwaukee for that, I can see Frankie, I can see my dad on Father's Day, and then I can I can do that. You're going to go to the right. skate park, too? You saw Frankie posing with the uh, Omnium, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. She was so I she. Did. That was funny. We were sitting there, and I didn't realize it was her. And it was like she had like five or so friends with her too, and they were all kind of standing where, around the where, bike. I, well, we were at Falcon Bowl for that, yeah. We, we were oh, at Falcon Bowl oh, for an event, and we were sitting outside having a beer. And uh, I think they were going to the River West Co-op or something, but they were all standing around it and talking about it. I'm like, ah, oh, hey, 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 what's going on over hey, there? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you looking at? Don't, yeah. She goes, my dad has one of these. I go, I know. <laughs> ah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Good that's stuff. Funny. Well, but yeah, and then so like I, I just met this guy um, who now works for Camba, who um, was. I, he maybe still works at Continental Bike Shop in Duluth, 
and he was asking me questions about a bikepacking route that Canva wants to put together for, they want to redo their Canva trail festival in the fall and start up at a bikepacking route with it. So I was giving him advice about that. Um, and he, we were talking in my garage and he's like, yeah, four of my friends just bought these Omnium for my uh, friends that work at Continental. They, they all bought the E-Assist one. Nice. It's so sweet. It's very smooth. So, Tony, Dave. Tony was ready to hate it. Dave, <laughs> I, I'm going to be full on yeah. honest that I wanted to throw so much hate on this bike for that kind of price. And I made it halfway around my fucking block before I was like, Holy shit, this is the nicest bike I've ever ridden. It's so smooth. It's like butter. <laughs> I mean, such a buttery ride. I don't drive automatic cars, but man. automatic shifting was but, just boner cool. Yeah, automatic shifting is pretty slick. Well, it, and so here's the other thing about the longer version. So the Mini Max, like you got, that's the first one that I rode because Ben's had one. And I agree. It, it, it's got the cargo capacity of a bullet just about maybe not quite um and rides like a regular bike mm -hmm. and it's lightweight still even mm -hmm. the steel one isn't heavy right even the steel electric one isn't that heavy my bike i weighed my bike um with the rear rack 10 years and the frame bag and um the basket on the front and a couple of inner tubes and a pump and a tool like I, I weighed basically like the bike as I, like, I can't go, this is how my bike sits before I put anything in it, sure. but it has to have a frame. It has to have a pump. It has to have a tool. It has to have some bags and a rack on it. So, so it weighs 59 pounds with all that shit on it. That is um, good. It's not bad. Right. And yeah. then, and then, but then if you throw cowboy in it, who weighs 45 pounds and another 35 pounds of bike packing and camera gear. I'm pushing 120 pounds around without an assist <laughs> without me even sitting on it, you know, so yeah. up heavy gravel road. But let me tell you this about the long one. Um, so Brandon said it's a magic carpet ride and I didn't quite remember we were talking about, I'm like, I'm going to want to have a front suspension fork on this. How can I find a weird 20 inch front suspension fork? I do not need it. Ah. You, that long wheelbase, it, mm. it takes all the chatter out. It it's it's a great, great smooth ride, even on bumpy, really bumpy stuff. Mm. It's it's really he's right. It's got a, but it I wouldn't get it except for riding off road. Um, I would get a mini Max if I lived in the city. Yeah, up here the long wheelbase, and then the other thing that it does, particularly loaded when cowboys in it. If I'm bombing down a steep hill that's loose gravel and sand, you know, that's always kind of sketchy, right? So um, it, like, handles that really well. There's that weird feeling when you're going on, like, loose gravel of, like, you're, like, surfing it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah for sure. You, you're, kind of, you're kind of drift a little bit, yep, whether yep. you're steering or not, depending on how loose the gravel is in which direction. And the long wheelbase, like, kind of takes all the worry out of that. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So, it's it, I'm really glad I got the long one for up here. But you guys are right. For an urban area, that short one. It, I, it, here's the deal. You don't have to have just one. You can have them both. <laughs> <laughs> Here, so your long and wheelbase. And I'd be divorced. Your long wheelbase story reminds me of um, my buddy Gunner lives in Decorah. If you ever get over there. He's the what he's one of the three fastest guys in Decorah, and he's an old man and he's really fast. But when I used to go out there yeah. as for the repping job, we'd ride, you know, every that was an overnight stop, so I'd always go riding with him. And he had a tandem, which obviously is long, kind of like uh, an omnium right. cargo. And there was a blind dude that lived in town, and he always went riding with Gunner, and and this guy would be he'd be on the back of the bike and and just providing some power, and Gunner would be on the front. And I remember coming down into town on this gravel road, which there were some really wide gravel roads, and Gunner's, like, drifting a tandem with a dude on the back. Who's and blind. they're just giggling their asses off. I'm like, yeah, there was a lot of confidence in the longer wheelbase. <laughs> Didn't we 
Didn't we have a guy that used to hang out and ride beach with us named Laurent, the French guy who ended up moving out to California that does the same thing, tandem with a blind guy in the back? Yep. Yeah, just, I mean. Good dude. There it is. But I've got like a long tail now, and I've got, uh, you know, a a front loader cargo bike that I ride off-road. I added that suspension fork that, um, that, uh, um, Manitou, uh, what's their fat bike? I'm forgetting the Mastodon name. or something. Mastodon, yeah. The Manitou Mastodon. I added that and because that thing, riding a rigid fork on that, um, was a nightmare. And that that fork saved that bike for me riding off-road. And I take like a really rough ATV trail 10 miles into Hayward to go grocery shopping. So it. I had quit all but quit doing it until I got that fork because it was that fork saved that bike. This bike, because it's a front long front loader for some reason, doesn't need suspension. It's a weird thing. The the long tail where most of my weight is up front needs suspension, and the the front loader one doesn't. I don't I don't know I don't know why, but I'm telling you it's true. Yeah, but. Uh, but anyway, you guys got the right bike for, for Urban. That's exactly the bike I would have if I lived in Milwaukee. Right on. All right, Dave. Well, thanks yeah. for calling. Okay, I, it's cool you're going to be in town a couple of times. Let's uh, hook up and whatnot. Yeah. Yep. Talk to you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for taking Bye. the call. Oh, absolutely. Bye. See you, Dave, uh, everybody. I'm, I'm going to interject that these hot line jaggers are hotter than normal. Are you, yeah. like, just getting I am, those sweaty? Yeah, I got, well, like, yeah. my eyeballs and, are sweating. And you're sitting there, like, he come on. I'm jump, trying to get you to yeah, have one, and I'm also at the me. same time saying, oh, oh God, this is painful. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Roll I'm playing chess here. <laughs> it's like, I know in many, <laughs> many moves, this is going to pain Oh, me. they're so good. Uh, we talked about a lot of this stuff on here for once. One thing that we just touched on over at the uh, Amorphic before we came over, AAA. I don't know if anybody knows this. Probably some people do. If you have AAA, they will actually help you if your bike breaks down too. Got a flat you can't fix, especially if it's an electric bike. Takes a lot of messing around or whatever. They'll they'll pick you up and take you to the nearest uh, service facility on your Triple I don't know if you need the standard or, or the cla- whatever. There's a couple different members. I'm looking into that. I would look into that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I got other stuff. We can cover some of this stuff next week. We're going to talk, talk about the Amtrak trip. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, we've. Uh, I think we kind of touched on it, well, but there's a new. Cool. There's another Amtrak to Minneapolis now. Yeah. And it stops at some stops that the Empire Builder does bypasses. Right. Empire Builder skips a couple stops, and this is more mm, dropping people off yeah. in scenic areas and whatnot. Well, it goes like the other eight, way, too. Eight stops in Wisconsin between it, Chicago and uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Right. So there's eight eight Wisconsin stops. And it and it splits somewhere, because mm-hmm. I know it goes by the Dells and yeah, up and to La Crosse. $44 one way. That's brilliant. Do you know that's going to be the best $44 I've spent on Daniel? I wonder if I can get the Minimax in there, just stand it up. If, if, totally they, could. if they have the, what's it called, the Venture car or something, the new one that's supposed right. to take. Depending on, yeah, what they're what they're running on that well, route. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it's just, you know, good cattle car, you know, kind of like the hop. Right. All know, right. Kind well, of thing. That would be great. We will investigate. Because I took the damn city of New Orleans. And oh, that was, Did you know it was the train they called the city of New Orleans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone five hey, hundred miles those days. No. Well, hey, that's, baby. that's what uh, got me through a 24-hour uh, I did train 44 trip. to Seattle. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I did 12 it. in the damn... I don't 24, I like well, it. it was 36, I guess, because it was like 12 I'll tell you why after Union the show. Station. I went to San Francisco many times on the train. Oh, probably there a dozen times. you go. There's, there's good reasons for it. Preferably, you're not married. Okay. <laughs> all, right, then. Uh, all right, everybody. Strangers yeah. on the train. Crisscross. Here's Criss-cross. the deal. We did it again. Oops. Oh. Meow. Thank you for coming, and welcome to our show. Meow. Oh, wait. I mean, goodbye, and welcome to next week's show. Aloha. You can say that on either end of the show. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Namaste. Oh yeah, bye.